All right, hello and welcome to episode 16 of my Hotline Miami clone in Unity tutorial. Today we are going to be covering, it is, sh uh, I've added shotguns, so like just, you know how shotgun bullets are different in Hotline Miami to normal bullets, I've added that and it's pretty simple. And I've added in ammo counters, so you don't have infinite ammo anymore. So as you can see, it's got two shots on this one, and you can see how multiple bullets pay. And two, and you can see how even though you hit it, someone went past it, and then I'm clicking and can't fire any more bullets, so I'll just throw that away and grab the heal gun. And boop! And yep. Oh, I should just check actually that they can use shotguns on them. Kill me, bro! Yep, they can use shotguns. Okay. So, first things first the shotgun prefab. Oh, uh, someone wanted me to cover how the blood pooling worked. And someone also asked why I don't use the built-in animator. To put it simply, I don't know how to, and this script array, sprite array animating works for me. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Really? Uh, okay. So let's see. Shotgun shells is literally just uh, four normal bullets in a parent game object, but I've rotated them. You rotate them at an off angle, so... When I click, when you click, they start moving. They'll sort of like separate off and like spread, so you can see how it's destroyed both of them, and then two of the bullets have gone through, and then one hits the wall, and one will keep going. So yeah, no script, extra scripting was needed. It was just four bullets, really simple. And now I will get onto the code. So for uh, Calculate, we first, of first, we've got the normal GUI stuff for drawing the ammo counter. So we've got the background, the stuff to scale it, GUI style. We've also got a boolean for deciding whether the weapon, current gun you're carrying is a shotgun or not. And working out, uh, and we got, we stored the current weapon, the weapon pickup script of the current weapon, if it's a gun. Well, Actually, if it's any weapon, but we use it on the gun to keep track of the ammo on the gun. So you can see that it is set here. Uh, we've added this line in to basically just set the current weapon script to it'll get the component out of the current weapon once it's been assigned and when you set the weapon. So that'll be happen when you pick up or lose one. But yeah. Uh, now on attack, we've added a little bit more to the massive if statement we've got. So we've got, you can see the first bit here, if, if gun is true and the ammo, current weapon, at current gun's ammo is more than zero, then it'll allow the animation to run, which has been moved. I've taken out, I know it was here originally, but I've now put it in here just so we can have a bit down here. Uh, there's a bit here that I'll go into for why. So basically it checks if it's one-handed, which is was the same as before. Then if shotgun's false, it'll instantiate a normal bullet at the position, but if it's not, it'll instantiate a shotgun bullet, which is just uh, the four bullets and under one parent brief, parent object. It's pretty simple. Uh, yeah. Um, and then it'll decrease the ammo. And it's the same for if you had a two-handed spawn, which I've not got yet. I just wanted to... Well, I've not got two-handed weapons yet. But yeah. Uh, then it goes to timer reset. For, like counting down so you don't fire all 30 bullets in a second or whatever and now we've got another sort of like blank part of the if statement so if gun's true but you've not got any ammo then it just won't do anything it won't animate it won't uh decrease ammo and create bullets or whatever that's why we had to move it the uh pa dot attack which is just the subroutine for saying to the player animate script on the object, yes, we can run the attack animation because we're attacking. And then this has the else bit has the, a PA dot attack put in it in place of what was here. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, we've basically got the GUI component, uh, GUI, an on GUI bit for it, which is simple. It just draws the uh, background texture in the bottom corner bottom right corner I think yep and then draws the ammo value over it and this is only done if the player has a gun on him and it'll say ammo on whatever okay so on weapon pickup uh I don't know if this was in before but we've got a public integer that's just ammo 
Uh, don't need to pass that through. It's just the same, really. But yeah, uh, Sprite Container has had a couple of new... Uh, it's not have much added to it. I think I've just typed something. I don't know. Oh, well. I'll find out in the error messages. Uh, basically, we've got Sprite Arrays for enemy shotguns and player shotguns. And we've got the respective things in the get sprite array methods. So you see if it's got if it's been passed sawn off, it'll return the shotgun. Attacking, return shotgun walking, return the bowie. No, that's not strike spring weapon. Oh, does that not work? Oh, I changed that one, didn't I? Yeah. Get enemy weapon and get enemy walk. So that's not used anymore, I don't think. So you can see, sewn off, it'll return the shotgun sub uh, array, uh, returns the shotgun array. That is just another part of the case statement added. Looks like fair. Okay, did I add on to the enemy weapon controller? Oh, yeah, uh, on the enemy weapon controller, uh, we basically just added if the shotgun's false, then it'll. It's a sim similar thing to the. Uh, uh, player weapon attack where it'll check if the shotgun's false that it's picked up. If it's not a shotgun, sorry, it'll just create a normal bullet. But if it's not, if it's true, it'll create a shotgun bullet or shell if you want to be technically correct. But whatever. Oh, yeah, and uh, enemies don't use ammo because I figured it would be kind of bullshit if you're just walking around the level and you're just picking up all the guns without ammo. So once you killed an enemy, you'll have a full clip to kill more enemies with. Simple. I don't think I've just used, used anything from here. Nope. Uh, player animate hasn't been changed. So yeah, that was uh, the main changes I've made. Uh, so we've added the GUI code here. Oh god, I just deleted that. That's not good. Uh, yep. Yeah. We've added uh, change the player attack a bit, The where we call the player animate attack. We've added uh, expanded this if statement. We've added a conditions for uh, ammo checking and not firing if we don't have any ammo. Storing the current weapon script in a separate variable so we don't have to keep getting it from the current weapon. And we've got all these. Uh, I'll remember what they're called in a minute, but it won't matter. And the ammo from that and the new sprite arrays and the case statement bits to get them. Now, uh, onto the blood uh, expanding. So I'll just show you the sprite array first because it's quite simple. Basically, if you look in the sprite editor, uh, the blood expansion is just, it's got seven sprites that's like progressively getting bigger blood sprites, uh, blood pools. So it's like just sort of, if you can imagine it's like pouring out of the body and just pulling behind them. So, if I just get prefab of it. Because what, what it does is basically just cycling through those sprites and then stopping when it gets to the biggest one. So it gives the illusion of the blood pooling. So if I pause that and play, oh gosh, what have I done? Uh, oh. Uh, oh, I had that in. That box out there. I'm trying to find why that's there. Well, well. Okay, that should be good. Uh, now we can play. So we can see we're using the uh, generic animate script that I wrote in a previous episode, uh, for a previous episode, and it, we've given it a layer of one. So basically, as you can see, as I like skip forward a couple of frames, it just increases in size. And then now you can see it's at the max size, it'll stop. And what happens when the enemy dies is that this is created on the order in the layer like below the uh, enemy corpse. So say the enemy corpse will be on order in layer two. This is on order in layer one, so it's just behind them and it just pulls. So I'll just show you that again. So I'll play and it just, it'll count down and cycle through pretty much. And that is just how it works. It's fairly simple to do. You could probably, you could also do it by increasing the size of the game objects, but I don't think it would look that good. So this you can have like a bit random and that. And then the other blood spurts and the 
pulling is just the same really. But these they'll loop and you can just try and finish and whatnot. So yeah, I hope that helped you. Uh cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe and all that. Go play loud or quiet. It's linked in the description. Cheers for watching. Bye.